Hey guys, so today we are making Ruby the Red Nose Reindeer. Ruby is Rudolph's daughter. I know the title probably says Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer K, but that's just for views. We're not making Rudolph. I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out. I made a lot of mistakes on this cake. Can you see them? I can see them. <laughs> It looks cool, you guys, so let's get started. I'm Santa Claus and Feliz Mum Lovey Dad. Feliz Lovey Dad. Adele! I hope that vine lives on forever. A few weeks back in the community tab, I asked you to help me name the new set of reindeers that'll be flying Santa's sleigh. Throughout this video, I'm going to be taking your comments and telling you the new set of reindeer that'll be joining his crew. So let's get started. Now to create this cake, I'm using my PVC pipe stand. I drilled a hole into the middle of my cake board and I hot glued a PVC pipe into the middle of the cake. I know a lot of you in the comments have been asking me about this cake system. You always ask, where do I buy a PVC pipe? What are pipe couplers? Why is this video missing like five steps? I actually made a video for my PVC pipe system, but I wasn't happy with it. It was a mess, you guys. I want this video to be really in depth, and so I'm reshooting all of it in January. So I'm sorry for the delay. And to create Ruby's body, I'm using my doll cake pan. And it's a perfect shape because it's thinner where the neck would be. And there's enough cake content to create the two legs and the belly and the back of Ruby's body. Now I'm adding the bottom layer of cake first and then placing on some buttercream in between each layer of cake. Just smoothing it out with my offset spatula and then adding on the second layer. I love doll cake pens and I'm still trying to figure out how to use Rosanna Pansino's doll cake pen. It's hard because I want to make a Rosanna Pansino doll cake, but I haven't come up with a design that I'm in love with yet. Maybe like, so like a doll with like the chef's hat and then she could be wearing the apron, the Rosanna Pansino apron. That, hold on, let me. Write that down. Then the red shirt and then... I think I got it, you guys. Hold on. Let me... Okay, I'm gonna shoot that in January too. Now for the reindeer head, I had to add a pipe coupler to create a support system. I just hammered it into place with my serrated knife. Just tap, 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 all the way down. To increase the area of support, I added two pieces of cardboard just so that the cake could sit on top of it. And I placed it on my next cake, which was made in my egg cake pan. Now Santa needed a brand new set of reindeer to fly his sleigh because the old ones were all just too old. They're like all in the geriatric ward. Arthritis for days. They worked so hard for like a, a, two, a, a million years. So this retirement was needed and deserved. Santa looked through thousands and thousands of applications from reindeer that wanted to help fly his sleigh. The first reindeer that Santa chose to help fly his sleigh was Winston the Blue Nose Reindeer. Winston the... The Yucatan Blue Nose Reindeer. Oh, I love that color. Now Winston wears a monocle because guess what? He's better than you. <laughs> He's also a master of geography, so he helps guide Santa's sleigh. I was scared that the top half of the cake was gonna be too heavy for the bottom, so I added another pipe coupler and a long piece of cardboard to support the top. I wanted to make sure that the top didn't weigh the bottom down too much because I was scared it was gonna break. Now I added some buttercream into the middle and then I cut my PVC pipe down so that it wouldn't stick out the top of Ruby's head. Then on went on my top layer of cake. After that, I started to carve Ruby's shape. I just started to carve away the sides of the cake and get the feel for Ruby's shape. I'm going to trim and round out the bottom of the cake. And then I just switched over to a paring knife and started to create a separation between her back legs and her belly at the front. The next four additions to Santa's sleigh are known as the Yummy Bunch. They're all named after food. We've got peppermint with gold nose, mochi with a green nose, espresso with a brown nose, and poppy with yellow. You guys named a lot of reindeer after food, but I chose these four because they're all the foods that I like. I love peppermint bark because it feels like you just ate a whole bunch of chocolate and you brushed your teeth, but you didn't brush your teeth, so you gotta brush your teeth afterwards to make sure that your teeth are brushed. I love mochi, especially mochi ice cream, but I love the green tea mochi ice cream, which is why I switched it from a purple nose to a green nose. 
poppy seed cookies, they're divine. There used to be this place by my house that would sell poppy seed cookies and if you get it with a lavender latte, I thought lavender was just a smell, but apparently it's also a taste and it tastes really good. And last but not least, I chose espresso because I love espresso. No milk, no sugar, just pure, dark, rich coffee bean. It's so delicious. Not a lot of people can handle that deliciousness. Most people think it's disgusting. I love it. Now once I was happy with the bottom of my cake, I started to work on Ruby's head. I shaved down the top of her head and just started to craft where her eyes would be. I slimmed down the front of her face and I also shortened her snout just a little bit so it wouldn't be as long. The next addition to Santa's sleigh crew is Obsidian, the reindeer with the blackest nose of all the reindeer. Obsidian helps with all the naughty children. When Santa flies over a house filled with naughty children, Obsidian just shakes his antlers and his nose and this slew of coal just rains down on the house. It's like a hailstorm. That's what you get when you're bad. Just a whole bunch of coal. I mean, your dad could use all of that coal and throw like a bomb barbecue, but guess what? You're gonna have really good barbecue meat but you ain't gonna have no toys cause you a bad little boy. And once I was happy with the face shape, I added some buttercream in this squiggly pattern that I've come to love. Before when I add a crumb coat to a cake, it just looks terrible. But now it's like so much fun to put on the icing and then you gotta smoothen it out with the offset spatula. This is the best. You guys, we're living in the world of gold. And I made my own Funfetti cake, I forgot to mention that. I, it's just a vanilla box cake and I added some sprinkles into it because I wanted it to be magical because reindeers that fly Santa's sleigh are the most magical beings in the entire world. They're like Oprah or Beyonce. Now I gave my cake an entire crumb coat. I placed it into the fridge and then I gave it a second coat of buttercream. You guys already know that I love this cake stand and I love this cake shape. If you haven't seen me use this cake stand to create some creatures, you're missing out. There are videos for you in the description box so you can see me create a dragon, a dinosaur, even the Easter Bunny. I even have like a Valentine's Day dog coming your way. Yo, this guy's so cute. And I gave this a full second coat of buttercream because I didn't think I was going to cover it with fondant. Now, just like my llama cake, I wanted there to be texture, but then I got really scared about how much texture there would be. And so I decided to cover it with fondant. But before that, I had to place my cake into the fridge to set up. Now while this cake was cooling in the fridge, I was watching Rosanna Pensino. Well, she's doing a whole bunch of stuff for Christmas too. Now the first video I ever watched of Rosanna Pensino was when she made the unicorn cake. Not the unicorn cake, this one, but the one where she made the unicorn topper. I remember when she made it, I was like, I can't do that. Uh, you want me to do that? I'm not that talented. And look at me now, I'm making cakes and 50% of it's made of fondant. <laughs> More fondant than you're willing to eat or your money back. Now let's get back to the cake. Once my cake is set up, I covered the body of my cake in a light gray layer of fondant. Oh, it's like a pencil sketch gray. I love that name. But it's, it's kind of like a, a pencil sketch that you erased a little bit because this gray is a lot lighter. So I covered my entire cake with fondant and this is where I made my first mistake. And I should have wrapped the fondant around the front and then placed the seam at the back, but I did it the opposite way because I didn't know what I was doing. You're gonna have a seam either way, but nobody really pays attention to the back of the cake, so that's why you wanna put your seams there. So I covered Ruby's body and I just pressed my fondant into Ruby's neck and used some fondant tools to push the fondant in between the cake and the cake board. And then I covered Ruby's face with more gray fondant. And this is where I made my second mistake. Push the fondant down as much as possible. Really didn't know how to cover the snout of this cake. I've never seen, oh my gosh. I don't even really want to complain. It sucked and we're just gonna leave it at that. The solution I came up with was just cutting away the excess fondant at the bottom of the snout. Now there was a seam and I just tried to minimize the seam as much as possible by blending the two pieces of fondant by the snout together. It was ugly and it wasn't flat. I'm just learning how to cover cakes like this and so this was terrible, but next time I do a cake like this, it'll get better. And the times after that will just progressively get better and I'll get more professional. 
and then I'll stop doing it because I'm bored. <laughs> now to cover up my fondant seams, I did add some fondant paste. It's just fondant mixed with a little bit of magic sauce. It covered up the cracks, but it wasn't as flat as I wanted it to be. So thank God I'm covering these areas with even more fondant. I have to meet my 50% quota. <laughs> I covered the front of Ruby's body with a very long oval shape of white fondant. Now this shape covered the seam at the front of the cake, but you could still see just a little bit at the top. Just a little bit. I'm going to create both of Ruby's front legs with two large pieces of grey fondant. Roll them into logs and then press them up against the front of Ruby's body. And then I added four black hooves, two to the front and two to the back. If you want to see more of my Christmas con- I'm really proud of this seal, it looks so cool. Now after I placed on a little reindeer tail, I added blue spots to Ruby's back. I just thought the blue and the gray look really nice together. The last reindeer that Santa added to his crew is Moose. Now Moose was very much like Rudolph because he was an outcast. His antlers looked like moose antlers and not like reindeer antlers and so they always made fun of him. But just like Rudolph lit up the night sky with his shiny red nose, Moose lit up the sky 10 times as much with his shiny light up antlers. They were so bright you guys and they placed him at the front of the pack so that he could light up the night like a, like a very bright pair of high beams on the classiest Mercedes Benz you've ever seen. And if you were lucky enough to see Santa's sleigh flying across the night sky, you would think that you'd just seen the most beautiful shooting star in the entire world. I added a very circular piece of white fondant to create her snout. And then on went her ruby red nose. Using some fondant tools, I just carved out this tiny, very innocent looking smirk at the front of her snout. And I didn't want her eyes to be completely flat, so I'm just making like this little crater, pushing down the fondant with a ball tool. And then I added two circles of black fondant to create her eyes. I added some CMC to her ears just so that they would hold up and then I plunged them into the cake using toothpicks. Using the same blue fondant that I used on her back, I added some eye details. I think they look really cute. Now Ruby the Red-Nosed Reindeer is almost done. I just need to add her catch lights, those two beautiful antlers, and some freshly fallen coconut shaving snow to the cake board. And voila, my Ruby the Red Nose Reindeer cake was complete. She's so darling. I love the way this cake turned out, mistakes and all. And I had just as much fun creating all of the reindeer on Photoshop as I did making this cake. Look at them, they look so stunning together. Thank you, thank you, thank you for leaving all of your beautiful comments in the community tab. And I know if your comment didn't make it into this video, stay creative and keep commenting because it might appear in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I love you, I will see you very soon. Peace.